This is a map of all navigable waterways in America. And this project, which started more than two centuries ago, has resulted in more shipping routes within the US than the rest of the world combined. If you cross-reference this map with the population centers, you'll notice that more than 80% of people live within 150 miles of one of these waterways. And since shipping goods through water is an order of magnitude cheaper than shipping them over land, you can start to see how valuable this is. But this ambitious infrastructure project does much more than moving boxes within the country. And you'll see in a moment why this massive shipping network, which is hidden in plain sight, is responsible for taking America from mere self-sufficiency to a global superpower. Some may say that the construction was only possible because the U.S. is blessed with perfect geography. And it is. But pulling it off was much more difficult than you might think. As this project began when the U.S. was a young country, the highways didn't really exist. And since diesel engines were not invented yet, the only option to move goods on an unpaved road was a cart attached to an animal. So they looked to the rivers because moving goods through water was three times faster than anything else around. Although connecting all the rivers seemed like a simple idea, but to make them navigable through waterfalls and rapids, they had to figure out how to build canals, locks, and dams. And how do you do that without engineers? It's crazy to think that when they decided to build the first canal in Massachusetts in 1792, the U.S. had no formal engineering schools, and the men serving as engineers were entirely self-taught. Some were lawyers, some were teachers, and by every measure, they were starting from scratch. But they figured it out and kept on building, all over the country. And in the early 1800s, they attempted to build the longest canal in America, which even President Thomas Jefferson thought was a little short of madness. But in 1825, the historical Erie Canal was finally complete, which connected the Great Lakes to the Atlantic Ocean and reduced the cost of shipping a barrel of flour from Rochester to Albany from $3 to just 75 cents. This changed everything. Commerce started to boom. Cities flourished along sides, rivers, and waterways. Then a series of lawsuits halted construction. And it turned out it was the railroad companies that served as a major transport alternative stood to lose a lot of money due to the extension of waterways. But federal courts ruled in favor of the projects. And today, out of 25,000 miles of inland and intracoastal waterways in the U.S., 12,000 miles are commercially active. And as incredible as this is, it's only half the equation. Because when I looked at the numbers and compared the freight traversing through America's waterways to other means of transport, like trucks and trains, I was shocked to say the least. So check this out. This is a barge that can carry 1,500 tons of cargo. And around 15 of these are lashed together to form a tow, which is typical in most rivers, which means a 15 barge tow can carry 22,500 tons. And it will take around 1,000 trailer trucks or 225 rail cars to move the same load. So, if the same amount of cargo that is shipped using the inland waterways in America each year were driven by road, we would need another 15 million trucks, which is absolutely insane. But the real magic is in the economics, where the farmers of the US and Brazil compete directly in the global market for soybean and corn. Let's compare soybeans landing costs from both countries to Shanghai, China, the biggest importer of soybean in the world. So to produce one metric ton of soybean, it costs $293 to a farmer in Mato Grosso, Brazil, and $313 to a farmer in Davenport, Iowa. Now, by the time the cargo reaches the nearest saltwater port and is ready to be shipped overseas, see how the total cost is affected? And even though it costs the farmer in Iowa $20 more to produce a metric ton of soybean than a farmer in Brazil, savings from using waterways bring down the price enough to make the soybean from Iowa more competitive and by the time the shipment reaches Shanghai, the soybeans produced in the U.S. cost $5.35 less per metric ton than Brazil's, which is a massive advantage, considering millions of tons of cargo is exported every year. But there is also something about these waterways that is hard to replicate, which I have not touched on. That makes the U.S. a superpower unlike any other, and it's the ability to move heavy military equipment as these waterways have been developed and operated by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers since the early 1800s. Military depots, reactors, and launch sites are strategically placed along the waterways, and these routes were specially designed by maximizing the bays and lagoons to allow the U.S. Navy to move not only within the country, but also along the coast, thereby avoiding open ocean crossings without the fear of submarines. All this to say, 
that America's water resources infrastructure is not only a competitive advantage, but also an example where perfect geography meets excellent design. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.